On April 9, 2025, the space community was amazed by the shiny mirror-like nose cone of Starship 39, which is likely the ship for Flight 13. This bright polished surface was a big contrast to the rough and patchy look of the first Starship prototypes. At first glance, it looked more like a display piece than something built to survive the extreme conditions of space. But there's a reason behind this new look. The shiny surface is the result of SpaceX, moving from manual welding to automated robotic welding. This change made the construction process more precise and consistent, but it also brought new challenges and trade-offs. In this episode of TechMap, we'll explore how SpaceX transformed Starship's design and why this shift in welding technology marks a major step forward in building the next generation of spacecraft. The year 2026 will mark a major milestone in Starship's development as SpaceX transitions to the next generation of its rocket Starship version 3. Most people know this version as the most advanced and powerful Starship ever built, representing the next big leap in the company's journey toward full reusability and deep space travel. But what fewer people realize is that version 3 isn't just about stronger engines or improved aerodynamics. One of its biggest upgrades lies in the new and advanced welding techniques used to build it. These welding methods make the rocket's structure lighter, stronger, and far more precise than anything SpaceX has built before continuing the evolution that began with those first shiny mirror-finished prototypes in Texas. It all began when SpaceX started purchasing robotic welding machines from companies like Liberty and KUKA, similar to the ones used in Tesla factories. This change came after they faced persistent issues with their original welding method known as flux core welding, used on the early Starship prototypes. Flux core welding works by melting a metal wire to fill in cracks while a protective gas prevents corrosion. However, this process requires a controlled indoor environment while SpaceX carried out most of its welding outdoors in a large tent, often relying on welders with little to no rocket building experience. As a result, many of the welds ended up with cracks, corrosion, and rough edges. These imperfections weren't just cosmetic. They posed serious structural risks. Even small cracks and sharp edges can become stress points that expand under pressure. During one of the pressure tests, the early Starship prototype known as Mark I exploded after a horizontal weld failed. SpaceX attempted to fix these issues by grinding down the rough welds to remove cracks, but the improvements were limited. Flux core welding also presented other challenges. It was less precise, generated more heat, which could warp the metal and often required multiple passes to achieve a proper bond. While it worked well for thicker metals and was relatively inexpensive and straightforward, it produced rougher welds with slag that required extensive cleaning afterward. That's where robotic laser welding came into play, producing cleaner and far more precise welds than before. This method uses a focused laser beam that heats a small area very quickly allowing for strong, smooth, and consistent joints. Because it concentrates heat so efficiently, the surrounding metal is less likely to warp, and the welds themselves can be completed in a fraction of the time. Robotic laser welding works best on thinner metals and integrates easily with automated systems, though the equipment required is significantly more expensive. Despite this, SpaceX decided to make the shift recognizing the long-term benefits it offered. Beyond improved precision, laser welding also made Starship significantly lighter. By tightly fusing the right points on each metal sheet without requiring multiple layers of welds, SpaceX managed to reduce the overall mass by about 20%. The technique also allowed engineers to use thinner stainless steel sheets for the Starship's rings, cutting down both on weight and the number of welds needed each one a potential weak spot. Around the same time, SpaceX replaced the 301 stainless steel 
used in earlier prototypes with 304L, a version that offers better corrosion resistance during welding. Together, these upgrades represented a major leap forward in the efficiency, strength, and reliability of Starship's construction. At the same time, the adoption of robotic laser welding has automated much of the process reducing human error and speeding up production even further. The outcome was a lighter and stronger spacecraft that not only saved weight, but was also faster and more efficient to build an ideal combination for carrying more cargo into orbit. However, any form of welding inevitably affects the metal itself. The intense heat softens the material, reducing the strength it originally gained through manufacturing. In the case of Starship, the stainless steel sheets are cold rolled before welding a process that compresses and strengthens the metal. But once those sections are welded, the heat reverses part of that strengthening, leaving the welded areas softer than the rest. To address this, SpaceX uses a post-welding process known as planishing. This involves a large mechanical system that hammers and compresses the welds until they regain the same hardness and uniformity as the surrounding metal. Beyond restoring strength, planishing also smooths out the surface, giving Starship its signature polished mirror-like finish. While traditional welding methods require melting the metal, SpaceX introduced another advanced technique that works differently, friction stir welding. This method doesn't rely on melting the metal at all, offering a stronger and cleaner alternative for certain parts of the spacecraft. In friction, stir welding a rotating tool presses and rubs against the two metal pieces being joined. The friction generates enough heat to soften the metal without melting it. As the tool moves along the joint, it stirs and blends the softened material together, creating a solid bond on a microscopic level. This results in exceptionally strong, smooth welds with very few defects such as cracks or air pockets. The process also produces minimal waste, causes less distortion in the surrounding metal, and is generally safer for the material compared to traditional welding, which relies on melting. SpaceX applies friction stir welding to critical parts of Starship, where strength and reliability are essential, such as large structural sections and the fuel tanks. This method ensures that the spacecraft can better withstand the extreme stresses of launch re-entry and multiple reuse cycles making it more durable and efficient in the long run. In parallel, SpaceX reinforces certain sections of Starship by adding vertical steel bars inside the structure to increase rigidity and strength. The concept is similar to reinforcing a soda can, while the thin metal shell of the can is surprisingly sturdy on its own. Adding vertical supports inside makes it far more resistant to bending or crushing. These internal steel bars act like miniature beams or pillars that help the rocket maintain its shape under stress. During flight, Starship endures immense forces from air pressure engine thrust and gravity. The internal bars help distribute these forces evenly preventing the structure from flexing or deforming. They also reduce the number of welds required since the bars provide extra support and connection points between metal sections. Fewer welds mean less time spent welding a lighter overall structure and faster assembly key benefits for a rocket designed to be reused and produced at scale. Starship wasn't always meant to look like something out of a 1940s science fiction movie. In fact, the original plan called for it to be made entirely from carbon fiber and production had even begun in California. Carbon fiber was chosen for its impressive strength-to-weight ratio. It's light-strong and highly advanced, making it an appealing choice for a next-generation spacecraft. However, despite its advantages, carbon fiber came with serious drawbacks. It begins to weaken at around 200 degrees Celsius, meaning it would need a thick and heavy heat shield to survive the extreme 1600 degree temperatures Starship would face during multiple re-entries. 
On top of that, it was extremely expensive, costing roughly $150 per kilogram. This made large-scale production impractical and threatened SpaceX's goal of creating a reusable, cost-effective rocket. Because of these limitations, SpaceX shifted to stainless steel. Although heavier stainless steel offered several key benefits that more than made up for the extra weight. It could withstand both high and low temperatures, far better than carbon fiber, making it ideal for the intense thermal stresses of spaceflight and re-entry. It was also dramatically cheaper around $3 per kilogram and much easier to manufacture in large quantities. This switch represented a major turning point in Starship's development, bringing the company closer to its vision of a fully reusable and economically viable spacecraft. To find the best balance of strength, flexibility, and resistance, SpaceX tested several types of stainless steel and even developed a new alloy specifically for Starship. The first major choice was Type 301, an austenitic chromium-nickel stainless steel. In its annealed state, Type 301 is highly ductile and can be stretched and shaped easily ideal for forming the curved body of a rocket. When cold worked, it reaches some of the highest strength levels among the 300 series steels. However, it does have a downside compared to Type 304L301 is more prone to corrosion due to its lower chromium and higher carbon content. When exposed to the intense heat of welding or laser cutting, the affected areas of 301 are especially susceptible to corrosion, prompting SpaceX to keep refining its choice of materials as Starship evolved. Later in the SN series, SpaceX transitioned from 301 to 304L stainless steel for many sections of Starship. Elon Musk confirmed that one of the biggest reasons behind this switch was 304L's superior strength at cryogenic temperatures. At such extremely low temperatures, 304L can be more than four times stronger than 301, making it far better suited for Starship's cryogenic fuel tanks and operations in the vacuum of space. When comparing the two alloys, 301 tends to perform well under standard conditions, but 304L provides several critical advantages overall. It offers better corrosion resistance, improved weldability, and greater durability around heat-affected zones. These qualities are essential for a spacecraft that must endure both the scorching heat of re-entry and the freezing cold of deep space. Today, Starship uses a proprietary alloy known as 30X, developed by SpaceX engineers. Although its exact composition and properties have not been publicly disclosed, it's widely believed to outperform previous alloys in terms of strength, thermal resistance, and manufacturability. This in-house development highlights how far SpaceX has come in tailoring materials specifically for the unique demands of Starship. While SpaceX continues refining its welding techniques here on Earth, it's clear that the company's ambitions extend much further. Welding technologies developed for Starship could play a vital role in future lunar construction. NASA is investing heavily in lunar welding research to enable the assembly of large structures directly on the moon. At the University of Texas at Dallas, Dr. Wei Li leads a NASA Early Stage Innovations project focused on testing welding processes such as electrical arc laser and electron beam welding under simulated lunar conditions, including extreme temperature swings, vacuum, and one-sixth Earth gravity. This research addresses issues like cracking and material defects that could weaken structures in space. The team is even developing a virtual lunar welding platform and using advanced energy deposition machines to replicate welding in a lunar environment. The long-term vision includes using spacecraft like Starship to transport metal components from Earth to the Moon, where they could be assembled and welded on site. This would make it possible to construct habitats, fuel depots, or research bases directly on the lunar surface, 
greatly reducing the need to launch pre-assembled structures from Earth.